Hey there, my name's Mallory and I'm here with All About Cats. In this video, we're going to be talking about what to do if your cat has gone missing. In order to make this video, I spent hours researching lost cats, including lost cat behavior and lost cat recovery practices. I pulled a lot of insights from the Missing Animal Response Network, which is headed up by Kat Albrecht. Kat is a former cop, search and rescue manager, and dog trainer who is now working as a pet detective and has gotten a lot of really valuable insights into what it takes to recover lost pets. I also read multiple studies on lost cats and the best practices for finding them. And based on that research, I've identified the following steps and actions as things that everyone should be doing as soon as they realize that their cat is missing. So you can follow this roughly sequentially, um, but you should start doing it as soon as you realize that your cat is missing. Acting immediately and starting an aggressive physical search seems to be the best way to increase your odds of being reunited with your cat. So you want to take action as soon as possible. Of course, if your cat is currently missing and you didn't start taking these steps right away, that's fine. I'm going to be giving you an action plan so that you can start feeling a bit more in control and you'll know what to do next. So with that introduction out of the way, let's talk a little bit about feline behavior, specifically the behavior of cats who have gone missing and how that should inform your search. So first off, cats are territorial and typically they have pretty small territories. So one study found that the median distance away from home that an indoor cat who had gone missing was found was about two houses. So these cats really are not wandering that far and even outdoor cats uh, who are familiar with the outdoors and would generally roam within their territory are being found typically somewhere around 17 houses away. So with that in mind, the first thing that you should do as soon as you realize that your cat is missing is to start small. Start inside of the home. If you haven't seen your cat go out, you're going to scour your house. So you're going to want to look under the sofa, behind any curtains, look in any cracks and cubbies and nooks. Basically any place that you can shove your fist into, your cat can get into. Of course, you can shake a treat bag, try to entice your cat with food as you do this. If you have looked through the entire house and you aren't seeing your cat, well, it's going to be time to expand your search range a little bit and start looking into the yard. You're going to want to look everywhere possible behind bushes, underneath boards, uh, in trees, look everywhere. If it's nighttime, you're going to want to shine a flashlight around and try to see the reflections of your cat's eyes and overall just do a really thorough search of the yard. And then if you've looked all around your yard and you're still not seeing your cat, then you're going to need to start expanding your search. So if you live in a neighborhood, you're going to want to go from door to door and knock on your neighbor's doors and ask them if they've seen your cat. Very often cats will wander into a neighbor's yard um, or wander into their garage and get stuck there. Some cats who are really curious and sociable will kind of have two homes and you might not know it, so they might be living with a neighbor part of the time, so that could be the case. But you're going to want to talk to your neighbors. And in addition to talking to your neighbors, you're going to want to ask them if you can go in their yard. So I know that's a little bit intimidating. You might not feel comfortable asking that, but if you can work up the nerve, this is going to be the best way to do a thorough search. Most people, are not going to do the level of a thorough search that you would in their yard. Um, so you want to have the peace of mind of knowing that you looked in every area of their yard and did a really thorough search. While an active physical search is the best way to increase your chances of getting your cat back, it also helps to make your home an inviting place and kind of invite your cat to return. So you can put out some food and water outside of your house in order to draw your cat back. Of course, this can be a bit of a double-edged sword because you could also end up attracting other cats and wildlife, which will end up scaring your cat away. So you're going to have to give that some thought. You can put chairs next to open windows to help them get in there. You can also open up the door, maybe put some laundry next to the door to provide a familiar scent. So these are all ways to introduce a familiar scent and also make your home welcoming. For your cat to return to. Now, if your cat has been scared to come out and then they kind of creep out to return home and it's nighttime or 
dusk or dawn and you're not available to let them in, then they might just come back and then have to leave because you weren't there to let them in. There are a few ways to solve this problem. One is of course, just to be there as much as possible to be available to let your cat in. But of course this usually is not possible. So one thing that you can do is to put out a baby monitor so that you can hear it when your cat shows up. You can also use a home security camera. These will allow you to be aware of it when your cat arrives at the door, um, even if it's in the middle of the night. Another option is to put out a humane trap, like a have a heart trap, which is the type that people will typically use when they're doing um, TNR efforts or trap, neuter, and return. So these traps don't hurt your cat. They just um, invite your cat in to go eat some food and then they automatically close with your cat inside uh, when your cat presses on this little plate. Now, I was not able to find an appropriately cat-sized trap when I was shopping, so I ended up getting this rather small trap. But the principle is going to be the same. You're going to put some food inside of the trap, cover it up with a blanket or towel, make sure that it's set, and then when your cat comes in, it'll automatically close up. Now, of course, besides possibly catching your cat, this type of trap could also catch wildlife and other cats. So you're going to want to appropriately and carefully release these animals if you do accidentally catch them. But again, putting out this type of trap is another good way to make sure that when your cat does come back, they don't just come back and leave. Now, besides going out and physically searching and ensuring that you're able to get your cat if they do return, you're going to want to increase awareness. And that's where social media and Craigslist come in. I would encourage you to make a post in your local Craigslist lost and found board. You're going to want to include a picture of your cat, a brief description and your contact information. And you're also going to want to make a post on any local lost and found groups on Facebook. Of course, you don't want to skip the old fashioned way of getting exposure for your lost cat, which is putting out posters. When you do create a poster, you're going to want to make sure that it is big and bold and easy to read. So it's recommended that you make a lost cat poster that follows the 5555 rule. So this is a poster that includes roughly five words that you can read in five seconds while moving by at 55 miles per hour. So with that in mind, it's recommended that you create a big poster using a piece of neon colored poster board. I purchased this one for about 50 cents at a grocery store. You're going to attach to that big poster board a couple pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper. So one of those pieces of paper is going to include in large clear text, uh, some information about your cat and your phone number. And then the other piece of paper is going to be a clear color photo of your cat. Above those pieces of paper, you're going to want to say something like lost cat, something nice and eye catching and simple. And then below that, you can put a number of things. One option is to put a sort of call to action, like please help, uh, which is what I used in this example. You can also consider putting a uh, reward, but think carefully before you do that. Generally mentioning a reward uh, is not the best way to bring out the right people, right? When you're trying to find your cat, you want to appeal to people who are interested in helping, not necessarily people who just want to make some money. Um, so you're going to get in all likelihood more qualified people by appealing to altruism than by appealing to a desire for money. You're going to want to put these big posters at all intersections in your local area or near the area where your cat was last seen. You're also going to want to print out some basic flyers, tr old fashioned, traditional uh, lost cat flyers. And you can distribute these to your neighbors. You can also pass them out to shelters and places that do cat adoption events. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And you're also going to want to pass these out at local businesses. As I mentioned in the last point, it is important to make sure that shelters are aware that you have a lost cat. So most shelters will allow you to file a lost pet report with them. So you're going to either go to the shelter or go to their website and let them know that you have a lost cat. And this will allow them to look at all of the cats who are brought in and then possibly notify you, but you do not want to rely on this alone. You're also going to want to religiously check the shelter website and go into the shelter 
somewhere between once every day and every three days after your cat goes missing. You're going to want to do this with all shelters in the nearest 60 miles. You don't have to go into the shelter 60 miles away, but you do want to be checking their websites. Additionally, you can use Petco's Love Loss tool. With Petco's Love Loss tool, you're going to upload a picture of your cat and then it will use its facial recognition technology to match your cat's face with the faces of cats in found listings and shelter listings uh, in the nearby area. It's also important at this time to make sure that your cat's microchip is up to date. So you're going to want to ensure that your cat's microchip has all of the latest contact information so that if somebody does bring your cat into a vet or shelter and has their microchip scanned, they're able to contact you. And again, you're going to want to just keep doing this. You're going to want to continually check those shelter sites, continue to go into the shelter periodically. You're also, of course, going to want to keep those posters and flyers fresh, and you're going to want to continue periodically searching around for your cat. You're going to want to keep doing everything that you can uh, to get your cat back for at least, I would say, two months. One interesting study done in 2017 looked at lost cats and their recovery. And it found that the percentage of cats who were found after two weeks was about 33%. And that number continued to go up to about 56% after two months. They didn't really see that great of an increase in the percentage of cats that were found after two months, but it definitely showed that that number continues to go up to that two month point. So you definitely want to keep the search going for at least two months. This can be very, very draining and fatiguing. If you want someone else to help you out, one option is to hire a pet detective. So this might sound a little bit strange, but there are people out there who are trained, very experienced, and who have the equipment necessary to do a systematic professional search for your cat. Um, I'll put a link in the description to a directory of pet detectives in the United States. It's sorted by state, so you can see if there are any detectives in your state or who are willing to travel to your state. And you may find these people to be very helpful and give you some peace of mind knowing that um, someone's out there doing a professional job of looking for your cat. So that's about it for my tips for what to do if your cat's gone missing. If you're watching this right now because your cat has gone missing, I hope that it gave you a solid action plan to work with and that it helped you to feel a bit more in control of this situation. If you're interested in learning more and getting some more tips and resources, I will put links in the description to all of the resources that I found helpful during my research and which I mentioned in this video. So as always, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with anyone who you think might also find it helpful. Um, if you're interested in more information on all things cats, please subscribe to the All About Cats channel. We release videos at least once a week, so you can click the notification bell and never miss an upload. If you like what we do here and on the All About Cats website and you're interested in supporting us further, you can check out the All About Cats shop. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well as in the cards. And there you'll find a variety of cat inspired items, including the shirt that I'm wearing here. And your purchase helps us to provide more information to help people give their cats better lives. It really, really helps us a lot. So thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next video. Bye.